Hello, Lisa here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my 2020 top fives. So I'm going to be talking about my top five Oracle decks and my top five tarot decks from 2020. So these are not necessarily decks that released in 2020 or were published in 2020, although some of them may be. These were decks that came into my collection in 2020. And can I tell you, it was actually really hard, like really hard to narrow this down. <laughs> so we are going to dive right in. I'm going to start with Oracle decks. And these are in no particular order, because let me tell you, it is hard enough to pick top fives, let alone try to put them in some kind of order. So if I get brave, maybe by the very end of the video, I'll be able to pick a favorite from each category. But for now, let's just dive in. This is one of my favorite things to do every year is talk about what were my favorites from the previous year. So I know this video is coming out in January, but it would not have been complete. 2020 would not have been complete without a nod to my favorite releases. So first off, I want to talk about the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck. This is by Amanda Lovelace, who is the author of The Princess Saves Herself in this one, which is a collection of poetry, um, as well as The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one, The Mermaid uh, Doesn't Lose Her Voice in this one. Her poetry is incredibly um, empowering and has a strong self-worth message. So you guys know I'm all about that life and her Oracle deck. This is just, it's incredible. Wonderful keywords. I have found that people sometimes don't feel the connection between the title and the, the sentence underneath. Like it says, which justice is coming. Um, mural, be your own first priority. This totally works for me. And I think the reason it works for me is because this reads the title and keywords kind of combined read a little bit like Amanda's poetry, which makes sense because she created this deck. Um, so there's nods to that feeling of the poetry to me. And it just works. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody. But this deck just I, I just really, really love it. There's some wonderful body diversity through this deck. Look at that. I just I adore. It feels very real. It, it's modern, but it also feels kind of like it would work well with a not so modern deck. This plays for me very well next to the everyday witch tarot, which has a similar kind of modern not modern, not modern kind of mix to it. But I really just love how relatable the characters in these cards feel to me personally. How like people in the real world they feel. Now, if anything, I would say that this deck actually leans a lot more larger bodied than slender bodied. So when I say body diversity, I don't know if that's entirely true, but it feels like it gives some real space for bigger bodies. And we don't get that all the time in Oracle and Tarot. So I really genuinely appreciate that myself. You might feel differently, right? So it's going to be personal preference. But I just, this was such a, a, a really exciting deck for me to bring into my collection this year. And I'm so happy to have it. I love pairing it with my more modern decks. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful reader. It just, it works. I also really love the backings. Now my deck has a bit of a bow, which is not unusual. Um, I've noticed that some of my decks do this. And I think it does have something to do with humidity. There's ways to deal with it. But like, honestly, it shuffles still fine for me. It is a bigger, like taller Oracle deck. But I have larger hands. So I don't struggle with that too much. And I really enjoy it. So that is the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle deck by Amanda Lovelace. Another favorite that definitely earns top billing for me in 2020 that came into my collection is the Threadbound Oracle by Cedar McLeod. Oh my gosh. You guys, this deck, it's so smart. First of all, production quality is beautiful. It's a gorgeous linen cardstock. Shuffles like a dream. This will hold up really, really well. Um, in addition, the Oracle deck itself has a structure. So if I remember correctly, there is paper, uh, paper pulp, inkwells, and and fiber as the three suits of like sort of a minor arcana in a way and then there's also like major arcana and the major major arcana i'm calling it that because that's what it feels like to me it's not necessarily called that in this deck but the majors make up about half the deck and then there's the minors and the minors make sense right so you have four of paper but it's not just the four of paper it's four of paper signature and a signature is a clump of pages that goes into a larger bound book um and each one of them, the keywords make sense for what it is. So a signature, tradition, organization, and planning. Because when you're when you're creating a book, you plan out which what's going to go in each signature when you're preparing to do that process, right? So the structure of it makes a lot of sense. Numerologically, this deck also really works. Fours tend to be very stable um, cards in here. Fives tend to be more disruptive energies. Um, it's just, it's very, very smart. It's really well thought out. 
Here we have the four of ink is the pen. Manifestation, communication, and clarity. Um, it just, it really, really works. This is another deck that would pair really beautifully with, I think, either modern or more fantasy-based decks. It could play well in either sphere. Um, the clothing and uh, and other sort of, I guess, things in, this, in the imagery are not overly modern or overly medieval or anything like that so you could place it in a bunch of different time periods this is probably one of the more modern look looking outfits but there's a lot of wonderful diversity there's a lot of gender inclusion there's a lot of like nondescript gender just a lot of um it's just really wonderful i feel like there's a lot of ability that features yeah here's one of the fives the five of paper is the cut um, I mean, it's just, it's so smart. It's so smart. Cedar did an amazing job with this, and it's a really great, versatile deck. More and more, I find that the decks that tend to hit top billing for me tend to be incredibly versatile, at least some of them, or they hit a specific niche of something that I feel like is missing in my collection. So next up, I want to talk about the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck by Melissa Salvaggio. The artwork in this deck is by Jess O'Connor. It's a beautiful deck. Love these magnetic boxes. They make me happy. This is another deck that I absolutely love and find myself wanting to go to again and again. It pairs gorgeously with pretty much anything. There's the artwork is a style that I think just really works with with again almost any tarot deck. The keywords are expansive and the color in the artwork lets you play with chakras, which was the intent of the creator. Um, so you can really see the solar plexus and the sacral chakra in this image with a bit of throat, right? With the abundance card. Um, there's also cards that represent each chakra. So um, macrocosm would be the crown chakra card and microcosm is the root chakra card. And then there's other, here we have manifest for the solar plexus, right? Um, it's just, it's really good. It's not just animals. It's animals and, and bits and pieces from nature. It's really powerful. I find that it, it adds so much to a reading when I pull it in. It speaks really clearly to me. I adore it. Um, it also, anytime I have, yeah, there's the root chakra card, microcosm. Anytime I have a deck that has animals, my preference is that there be a unicorn and a ladybug. It's just a thing. And this ladybug is also, um, the keyword is worthy. This, this card alone is the main reason I back the deck on Kickstarter and is one of the reasons I think this deck will forever stay because that's such an important um, combination for me, the ladybug with worthy. It's a really big part of my own practice. It's one of the reasons I have a ladybug tattooed on my arm along with a lotus. And there's also a unicorn in here. There it is, Limitless, which I just love. Are we focusing? Yes, we are. I was having focusing earlier problems earlier and I had to restart this video, which was not fun times. So it's focusing now, yay. Anyway, When My Soul Whispered, this is such a gem of a deck. It's also got a beautiful um, antique gold gilding and it's a trump sized deck. So it's a really nice size. It's, it's beautiful. This is one of those decks that if you only have a very small collection and you want a couple good all rounder Oracle decks that you could pair with just about anything, this is such a good one to pick up because it's so useful. And there's a good number of cards. Has it say on here? Yeah, 44 cards. So it's a good number of cards, a good number of expansive keywords, easy to work with. It pulls in different elements. You've got nature, you've got chakras. It's like, yes, please to all of the things. So I love this, the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. Next up has to get mentioned is as one of my favorite oracles of 2020 is the Kim Cran's Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. I sat on the fence on this deck for a long time and I will admit that a good reason for that or the main reason for that is I did not like the backings. I don't like the backings. I don't think I'm the only one either. Um, they're meant to look like diamonds and they do, but when you see them in person, it's so grainy and pixelated and maybe that was the purpose or the intention, but it just, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It looks like a too small of a picture was used and blown up. Like if you look at the little gem here on the box, that's cute. If it was that high resolution in this bigger size, it would have worked for me, but it's not. And it, it bugs me. Anyways, okay, enough about the complaining. It was, it was a favorite, I swear. Um, one of the things I love about this is I love, love working with um, archetypes as a concept. So archetypes, put simply, in my opinion only, are basically universal energies, right? They're things that we can all relate to at some point in our lives. They're they tend to be the big things. That's why we say, see, there's another little um, diamond that could be the diamond from the backs. Just blown up. Anyway, sorry, I can't get over it apparently. Um, 
one of the things that I really enjoy about archetypes, just like in the major arcana, is that there's something that we can find wisdom in regardless. Now, there are some cards in here that I have to look up every time, like Thanatos, but a lot of these read well intuitively. Um, but I actually really enjoy pulling these cards in a much smaller kind of way, like pulling one and sitting with it for a while and like seeing where that archetype maybe shows up in my life. It helps with the big work. And I think decks that help with the big work are really helpful to have in one's collection. Yeah, I just really, I really enjoy the energy of this. And I really like that it's not stereotypical archetypes. A lot of times when you see archetypes, and this is good to do, right? A lot of times they are classic Jungian archetypes, which are useful archetypes. Please don't get me wrong. I love working with those classic um, documented archetypes. Um, because they're powerful and they exist for a reason. But this goes its own way, and I love that about it. Um, I've just gotten some really powerful messages from these cards, and they're a really wonder wonderful one to do any kind of like shadowy work with. And I love that they're round. It's just, it's fun. I don't find this too terribly difficult to shuffle in general, but it does tend to clump because it's very matte, um, which is my one primary complaint. The size is fine for me to riffle. Um, they just tend to clump. Now, it has gotten much better as I've owned the deck, but when I first started to try to shuffle like that, I would get these huge clumps, which was mildly annoying. Uh, but this is a really cool deck, and I don't think it, there's anything else like it, and that is awesome. I love it. So finally, in the Oracle deck category, this is probably the newest one out of all of these to my collection. It even has a bag that doesn't have a, a peggy bag that doesn't have a cord yet. I've got to do that probably this weekend at some point, um, <clears throat> is the Threads of Fate Oracle. This is, I believe, the Shadow Edition. It doesn't say it anywhere on the box. <clears throat> People have confirmed in my uh, walkthrough video that this, this does look like the Shadow Edition. I don't think it says it anywhere. Yeah, I don't think it says it anywhere. But this is a wonderful deck. It came into my collection via a trade. Um, so I believe this is one of the older Shadow Editions. It's really pretty. Um, it's so much more than meets the eye. When I first saw this, I was like, it's sigils on backgrounds. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I was so like not impressed. But um, the more I looked at it, the more I realized that the what you see in gold on the card is so smart and makes so much sense with the keyword and what it represents. Here we have the armadillo for boundaries. Um, there's so much there if you really look at it. Here's Dare to Dream, and you see what looks like a dragon claw reaching around a diamond. Patience has this beautiful turtle. Um, there's also things happening in the background. A lot of times they're scenic, but here you have Get Curious, <clears throat> and you have this beautiful bird, and then in the background is a beach. It, there's more to it, and its I don't think it's as easy to take it in um, on camera as it is in person. Although sometimes the backgrounds, I feel like, show up better on camera than they do in person. So it's hit or miss, I suppose. Now, there's different versions of this. There's um, the Rose Edition, I believe, has a rose gold um, sort of look to it. But I'm really, really happy that this came into my collection. I love that it has suits. And it has, again, it has like sort of like minors and majors. There's, there's the four elements are represented. And then you also have like sort of a main archetype kind of section. Um, so if you want to work within that structure, you can. I love how this card looks. The Alchemist, and you've got the moon there. Oh, it's so pretty. So yeah, these are really, really gorgeous. They do pair well with lots of different things, which is another thing I love about it. And it's something I've come to really value in my Oracle decks is when I feel like I can use them with a lot of different decks because I don't want a humongous, I mean, I do have by most standards, a humongous Oracle deck collection, but I don't want it much bigger than it is now. So for me, Oracle decks that sort of can pair with lots of different things, can be used for lots of different purposes, tend to really be what I reach for more than more often than not when I'm gonna when I'm thinking of purchasing an Oracle deck. Um, I want less Oracle decks in my collection these days that are more specific in their purpose. So yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna try to pick a favorite until we've done the tarot. Um, so let's talk about now my favorite, my top five tarot decks that came into my collection in 2020. So the first of these is the Beautiful Playful Heart Tarot by Kitten Chops. Oh my gosh. So you guys knew I needed this deck before I knew I needed this deck because I'll tell you what, when this deck was funding on Kickstarter, I got so many messages and tags and comments about how I needed this deck. 
and I just really didn't think I did to be completely honest I have such a loyalty to my Mons Tarot which you guys know that I was like no I don't need this I don't need another like really specifically inner child based deck um, these backings are beautiful by the way um, and this deck is actually by the same printed by the same company that printed the uh, Pagan Otherworlds so if you like that tuck box quality it's really nice if you like that quality of that deck the linen finish the way it shuffles this is going to feel exactly the same to you anyways um this art style i just wasn't sure about to be completely honest i was like i don't know it's kind of messy like in a in a good way like it's messy in a good way don't get me wrong but sometimes that can be something that puts me off a little bit but oh my gosh what ended up happening for me with this deck is I ended up getting a chance to meet Zara um, at the Northwest Tarot Symposium and she gifted me a copy of this deck and I fell in love with it. It is so special. It's so emotive in a way that I think other decks just don't do. This gets this cuts right to emotion for me. It's one of the decks that I feel like has the most polarity in terms of like the happies and the sads and the the neutrals and everything. I just there's something about Zara's artwork style that I feel like just captures, like you feel like you really see and feel the fear that the character's feeling in this card. I don't know, it's very emotive, right? Like I feel like I can know what each of these characters is experiencing by the way that they're depicted. And there's not a lot of decks that give me, that, that do that so effectively. So there's, I mean, there's a lot here. I, I do think this is more than just an inner child deck. Um, but when you want to connect, if you want to understand the emotions of a situation, man, this deck is a hard, heavy hitter in a really great way. So I love this deck. Um, it's it's hung on my favorites rack for ever since I got it, really. Um, I'm finally giving other billing to other decks, but I have spent a lot of time with it. I love it um, and can't recommend it enough. It's still available as far as I know. So uh, get on it. But yeah, this is one of those that I don't think if I hadn't have been gifted a copy, I don't know if I would have picked it up. And man, I am so, so glad it ended up with me. And thank you to those of you who knew that this would resonate with me because it totally did. And you were right. And I was wrong. And I learned. <laughs> I learned. So yeah, I love, love, love this deck. So another tarot deck that came into my collection at 2020 that blew me away in the best possible way is the Tarot of the She. <sighs> This is one of those that I thought I would never bond with. I kept seeing it. It's been around for a while. It's a Red Feather Schiffer publishing deck. So of course it's incredibly glossy. Um, but, and somebody asked this actually in my Facebook group recently, if, if it gets easier to shuffle over time, it definitely does. Um, the gloss does get less sticky um, the more that you work with it. So it's not so bad at all actually as I've worked with it. Now I also trimmed my deck. So I took the sides off of mine. Um, and I believe I also may have taken a little off top and bottom and then I rounded the corners. <sighs> I love so much about this deck. I don't even know where to begin. I can read with it so easily. As soon as I pull it out, the imagery right to my intuition. The keywords on the deck are fantastic. The court cards especially. This is one of those decks that if you struggle with court cards and you like to collect decks or you like to have more than a couple decks in your collection and you know you, you want to bring more in, this is one that I think can be really, really helpful. Um, I can't stress enough that you can get to know all of the cards with just a single deck, but at the same time, I really, really appreciate the way that the keywords, the imagery, um, the system of this deck works to help you understand what the cards mean. But again, particularly the, the court cards, I think are very elegantly done in this deck. The majors are out of this world as well. Sorry about all the glare. Um, that's my only thing. I wish these decks weren't, weren't glossy. Um, that being said, I have not been a huge fan of Red Feather Schiffer's matte cardstock. So I think of the two, if I had to choose between this cardstock and the cardstock of, say, the Shadowland Tarot as an example, I would pick this hands down. But I wish they could get, I wish Red Feather Schiffer could come up with a good, a really good matte cardstock. Um, because I think if they, if they landed on the right one, it would be just absolutely glorious. And maybe they've, they've done it and I just don't have any of the decks that have done it, but um actually it was really good with the everyday enchantment tarot a little clumpy but good but good for sure so yeah i think they have done it they have done it but anyways um i wish it wasn't glossy but it is stunning i love this deck so much and again i can pull this out for any kind of reading and i feel like it just sparks my intuition i connect with it really really easily i can't say enough good stuff about it really super happy i brought this into my collection how many times have i said really in this video a lot right like a lot lot <laughs> I feel like it's been a lot. 
So the Tarot of the She by Emily Carding definitely gets a spot in the top five for sure. So another deck that came into my collection, and this one was gifted to me um, by somebody who watched the channel, and I think it was like a runner-up in a say yes to the deck. And somebody's like, no, 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 I, I have this, you need this. Um, and they sent it to me, and it was, I think, still sealed. It was still sealed. It was really awesome. Um, Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. <sighs> I love this deck so much. Um, definitely one of my top five from 2020 for sure. This deck is so stunningly beautiful. Um, I love it. I love the cardstock. It's glorious. It's matte and smooth and like silky kind of. I suspect it actually has a silk matte lamination on it. Um, I don't think that silkiness is in my head at all. This has a really cool vintage feel. Um, but more than that, it just... I feel like I'm in a story. I'm in a world when I look at these cards. Um, they feel less less cartoon, more graphic novel, which makes sense for Dame Darcy's style. There's something about these softer tones and the mermaids that just really works for me. Um, I feel like it's an excellent, like, sort of Rider Waite Smith clone. And I just, I don't know what it is. I don't, I wish I could describe it better because I feel like with other decks, I can describe why I love it so much. But I just could not stop playing with this when I work with whenever I work with it. It's like I want to reach for it all the time. And that's kind of how I know a deck is a favorite is when I'm working with it for a week and I like I'm trying to think up new readings I can do for myself or somebody else. I just I want excuses to pull out the cards and play with them. And I felt this way that way with this deck every single time. Like I just wanted to use it as much as possible whenever it's in my hands. And again, I don't know that I can fully explain why. But I love it so much. Now this one has a gorgeous antique gold, um, like matte gold gilding. Really beautiful. And I love the backs. Really rich color in the backs. Love, 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 love. So that is the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. Um, and when Peggy and I found this mermaid fabric, I was like, well, hello. Perfect deck to keep in that bag. So yeah, that's a thing. Love, love, love. Love, love, love definitely in my top five. Next up for 2020, this one completely stole my heart in ways that again, I don't know if I can fully explain. Um, but this is the rainbow heart tarot. And you guys know how I feel about um, this might hurt tarot. This deck gives this might hurt tarot a run for its money in my opinion. Um, it's really beautiful. It's got a vintage -y sort of 70s kind of feel, and the colors are everything, even the box. Even the box. I love the box so much. Um, and the cardstock and the box have this, again, buttery, smooth, kind of, well, this is very matte. Um, silk matte lamination is what it feels like. The cards themselves have a little bit of sheen to them, kind of like a classic, like, say, I don't know, U.S. Games type cardstock. Oh. But the colors... There's the boldness and the vividness of the colors in this deck are everything to me. I, this is another one of those decks that when I have it out, I just want to keep playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. I love shuffling it. I love looking at it. Every single card. I would, I would hang these as pieces of art around my house. I love them so much. Um, it feels very, it feels like an empowering deck. It's a very diverse deck. It has like just... I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. I love the font, um, which feels very like 70s to me. I I don't know how to describe, but the, the colors are smooth and vivid and beautiful. And it's a wonderful kind of close up sort of intimate Rider Waite Smith clone kind of deck. Um, gosh, I just can't I can't love it more than I more than I do. Like, I love this Five of Wands. I love that each one is a different wildcat or like, um, what do you call it? Big cat? Big cat? Wildcat? Oh my gosh. I love this deck. And again, this is one that I feel like I could pull out for any reading and for any client, just like I feel like I can with the This Might Hurt Tarot. This deck has been hanging on my favorites rack since I got it and I have not been able to bring myself to take it out of my favorites um, rack since I, since, I, since I got it and brought it home. Um, gosh darn. This one was um, gifted to me by the creator for the purposes of review, um, but I'm not, I love it. I genuinely love it so, 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 so much. I just get really excited about this deck. Um, for me, there's only a handful of decks I feel like 
I can pull out for and pretty much read for any client for any situation when it comes to tarot. Um, this is one of them. So this one, this might hurt tarot are probably my top two in that category. Um, next to that might be light sears, uh, the textured tarot, the fountain tarot. There's a few, but um, there's not really actually a lot that fall into that category. And this was definitely my favorite from 2020 um, for that. And finally, this deck is so, so special and there's no way it wasn't getting a fit or a fit, a spot <laughs> uh, in my favorites of 2020. This is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot by Phyllis Curat. Um, I'm going to be spending more quality time with this deck. I've already read, oops, I bumped my camera. I've already read the guidebook from cover to cover and gotten to know these cards and this system very well um, and I'm not done yet. This deck is like the quintessential spiritual growth deck for me. Um, it feels like what I've graduated to from the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. If you like how rich the Dreams of Gaia Tarot is for healing and personal growth, this to me feels like the next step from that. Um, and to the point where I'm not sure now that this has entered my collection, how much I will work with Dreams of Gaia, because it feels like my work with that deck is probably done. I haven't been able to bring myself to part with it or to consider parting with it. And I don't know that I ever will. But this deck fills that space for me in a way where I like, it's like, okay, it's time, it's time to move on to this. And a good port, a good reason for that, I think, is that it takes, um, it takes the kind of work that Dreams of Gaia did for me. And I, I apologize to anybody that like hates comparisons like these. <laughs> I can't help it though. Um, I totally just kicked my camera. There we go. Uh, but I feel like where Dreams of Gaia was very sort of psychology, personal growth, healing based, this feels like it takes that and adds a spiritual component to it. It really asks you to look at your relationship with um, this, your highest self, with the divine, um, with magic. And it does have a very pagan a heavy pagan overtone, um, a heavy witchy overtone. And so it feels even closer to my personal practices and my the way that I look at the world, the way that I look at nature. Um, man, it just, it just, it fits, it, it, oh, sorry, I can't, I, I lose my words, but I just love it so much. The way that the Major Arcana is in reverse and the reason it's in reverse and the way that you learn from the Major Arcana being in the reverse in this deck, all of that comes together. Um, to create just a really powerful tool for healing and growth. This is the kind of deck that I would definitely work with for my own practice, not the kind of thing I would necessarily work with um, for clients, but it is, oh my gosh, it is, it's outstanding. I just, I'm, I'm speechless. Okay, so a couple minutes left. Let's see if I can actually, I think this one would have to take absolute favorite um, position for tarot. If I had to pick just one, this is probably the standout for me. Um, Phyllis Curat was a huge part of my sort of witchy origin story and um, her collaborating with Daniel Dolsky for the artwork um, on this just, yeah, that has to be my favorite tarot of 2020. As for my favorite Oracle of 2020, I think it's gonna have to be the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. Um, yeah, if I had to pick my number one, tarot it'd be witch's wisdom and if i had to pick my number one oracle it would be when my soul whispered i managed to do it i managed to rank one i can't put the rest in any kind of order but there you go ah <sighs> thank you so so much for joining me for my top five tarot and oracle decks of 2020 i really appreciate you hanging out with me i can't wait to hear what your top five tarot and top five oracle are so if you've made a video let me know down below if you've made an instagram post let me know down below or tag me and or if you just want to share in the comments what some of your favorites are, it doesn't have to be five. Not everybody brings in five of each in a calendar year. But if you've got a favorite or two you want to share with the rest of us, please do, because that's just really fun. Um, thank you so, so much. Please do click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you are new here. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you are notified of all my future videos and live streams, some of which are spontaneous. So that bell hopefully will help you be notified when I go live. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one tarot reading with me, you can always do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.